What's happening, you beautiful ghouls and ghoulettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris, and it's an exciting one today. Today, we are going to be painting up my second generation Wes Craven's new nightmare, Bone Claw or Bio Hand, Bio Claw. There's a few names for it. Now, if you watched my YouTube short a couple of weeks ago, I did a quick little review of this and a quick bit of background on this. So, this is what you see here is a second generation casting from my good friend Peyton Patron. Now, Peyton came into contact with a first generation casting from the production of Wes Craven's New Nightmare. These were essentially given out as gifts to cast and crew, but the entire thing is derived from the molds with the bone hands and the musculature and stuff like that from the hand that Robert wore as Freddy, or quote unquote Freddy, the demonic entity that takes on the form of Freddy. So Peyton was able to come up with a way to make second generation castings, and here it is in all its glory. It's absolutely beautiful. So today's video is going to be about making the blades, painting this up, finishing it up, adding the veins, and calling it a day. So I'm very excited. Now, when it comes to the blades, I actually have another friend of mine who goes by the name of Phil that has an original one of these with the blades on it. So I was also able to get in contact with someone who was able to provide reference photos of one of the screen used blades. On a side profile, I then got the measurements from Phil of the blades. So the blades for the most part are all the exact same length, which just makes things so much more easier. I then scaled it as best as I could. So this is scaled down to 35%. I was then able to trace those templates onto some acrylic perspex. Now, I'm not getting too carried away here. I'm just giving you the cliff notes of what I've done so far. This is a test blade with some perspex, so much so. This is actually the perspex I used on the Mandalorian helmet when I did the paint up all those years ago. This is the same perspex I used on the visor. So it's a perfect fit and the even better part you can see remnants on this casting of the original blades that were there. They're three mil and the perfect thing, this acrylic is also three mil as well. So it's just absolutely perfect. I've done a lot of practice when trying to add a bevel and just make it as smooth as possible with a lot of wet sanding. Again, I will show you guys the process of cutting this out and doing the wet sanding. Still tinkering with how I'm gonna be painting it because obviously I do want a nice chrome finish but not too mirrored. So we're probably gonna be doing a primer, a gloss black and then a chrome. I'm not sure whether to do a rattle can chrome or an Alclad 2 chrome fed through an airbrush, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Now I'm going to be honest, the new nightmare look isn't my overall favorite look and neither is the bio hand or the bone claw, whatever the fuck you want to call it. But to have something that has production lineage and essentially comes from the same molds as the glove or the hand that Robert wore as the entity, Freddy Krueger in Wes Craven's new nightmare is absolutely amazing. And it's just a nice contrast to have from my regular gloves to something like this, obviously something more organic, something that is very reminiscent of the original Nightmare on Elm Street post. So that's what they were going for with this design. So the first two steps are, we're gonna cut the notches into the fingers where the blades are gonna be placed. And we're then gonna grab the rest of our acrylic sheet and cut the other four blades out, grind them into shape. And then we're gonna do a lot of sanding, utilizing different grit sandpapers. Eventually we're gonna be wet sanding this to polish it as best as possible. So with that being said, let's get to it. Hey, time for some shitty commentary. So like I said, this is the exact same perspex I used for my Mandalorian visor and it's just sitting around and again, three mil, just exactly like three mil is on the blades that were on the original casting. So I'm just tracing the remaining four out using my angle grinder to grind out the basic shapes. And then we're gonna go to work with the actual bench grinder, my new bench grinder. I finally upgraded after like 25 years and just even out and shape out these blades. Now I also got my Ryobi rotary tool with the sanding disc to really make sure it has the proper curvature because it is a flat edge grinding stone. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to get that nice smooth curvature going on with the blades, but overall I was pretty happy. I then got my cutoff wheel and this particular cutoff wheel is a lot thicker than the regular one just to very carefully go in and cut those notches in. So I did one, two, three notches on either side to really space it out to get the three mil. 
And overall, it worked an absolute treat, as you can see right there. Those blades just lock right in. So here we have our rough ground out blades, and it's time to start sanding. I want a bevel, a smoothed off edge on these to have a bit of a curvature around the actual body. So we're gonna start with a 120 grit sandpaper, and I had the sorest wrists after this. We're then gonna move on to a 180 grit, just to get that nice smooth shape going. And then after that, we're gonna start our wet sand sanding with a 400 grit. I love wet sanding because by the end of it, your piece is usually so damn smooth and aesthetically pleasing. So we're gonna be finishing off with a 1200 grit sandpaper. And by now the piece, all the blades are like glass, nice and smooth and perfect for a chrome finish. So I do give them a wash with some sudsy water, some uh, dishwashing soap just to get any bits of debris, dust, anything that's lingering around now, like I said, we're going to be utilizing the original color of this casting for the bone. So I've got some watered down brown shoe polish just for something a little bit different. I've never used shoe polish in my life. Let's see how this works out. And it honestly worked a fucking treat. Covering the bone area and then dabbing away the excess, it looks like old bone. I couldn't believe it. I thought it'd be one of the things where I'm going to have to start from scratch. I didn't think it would turn out that well. And I just gave it a second hit on those particular bones there. But absolutely stoked with how it turned out. There is a fine line with trying to replicate the bone parts on this prop because there are certain props that do change in terms of their aesthetic throughout the film, like there were multiple versions made. But as you can see right there, that's the perfect medium that I was going for. Now I'm just going to grab myself a Naphthol Crimson from Liquitex. This is the heavy body one and this is going to be our base color for the muscle tone. And what I love about the heavy body series from Liquitex is there's no streaking involved when you're covering a certain piece, especially when it's like a, a resin casting. You don't have to do a second coat. You can do everything with one coat. It's quite incredible. And also get into those nitty gritty parts, especially all those sinewy bits right there. Just make sure you get all that coverage in there. And I really had to take my time going around all the bone areas just to make sure that anything didn't bleed onto the bone pieces. But as you can see right there, after about an hour and a half and being very careful, very happy with the end result. But this is a bit too much of a bright red. So we're gonna dial that back a bit and also get into that detail. So we're then gonna grab some black shoe polish and this has been heavily watered down compared to the brown. And as you can see right there, I'm really spreading that watered down shoe polish out very thin, mostly just to darken the overall crimson color, but also to get in those sinewy parts of the musculature, the sculpture and stuff like that. Like you can see on the, the wrist there, just how gnarly it looks once it all soaks into those uh, creases, those nooks, those crannies. And again, trying to be very careful to go around all the specific bone pieces just to make sure that that black shoe polish doesn't bleed onto the bone parts. I mean, it's no big deal if it does, like little bits here and there, you can clean them up with a bit of housekeeping, but it's just best that you can just stick it right onto the crimson. Now, I'm also gonna grab a yellow ochre. This was my favorite color to use on the Pattinson bat suit, and this is gonna be replicating our fatty, sinewy muscle pieces and really highlight the beautiful detail of this particular sculpture. And this really, like applying this color really brings the sculpture home. I absolutely love how this turned out. Was a bit of uh, dry brushing here and there, but overall your high points, that's where you want the ochre to cover. Now on that piece there on uh, between the thumb and the index, I'm doing a little bit of dry brushing, but then I also do go in on the real muscly tendon pieces there and cover it with that ochre color. Absolutely stoked with how that particular step turned out. Now to complement the crimson, uh, the shoe polish and the ochre, I've got myself a violet oil color. And this is for all the crevices. And this really highlights, again, all the detail, but also just brings together the crimson, the ochre and the black shoe polish. And trying to replicate that color tone as much as possible like the screen use prop. Now I'm not gonna be glossing this particular piece. I'm gonna leave it matte because I do like the matte look of the foam latex on the original screen used prop. Now for the blades and the other metallic pieces, I'm using a car rep plastic primer and chrome effect. Originally I was gonna be using 2K, 
but the guy at the shop said, use this, it's amazing. So I've sprayed some into a cup and I'm doing the finger rings as you can see right there. And it's great, it is quite mirrored for something that is applied by hand as opposed to spraying it on. It would just be too fiddly with masking off those areas, but it worked an absolute treat. Now I'm also going in on the knuckle pieces there, the, the, the separating pieces between the bones. And again, it's great. It's an almost mirror finish compared to how the blades are gonna do, but first things first, we gotta do the veins and we'll get to the blades later on. So as we're nearing the completion of this build, I finally found a way to replicate the translucent veins that run from this bone piece here up into the fingers. So what I have here is a fuel line for nitro fuel for RC cars. I got this at my local hobby shop. Originally, I was just gonna get some red wire from J Carl or the electronics section of Bunnings Warehouse, but I thought let's, let's really stick for the accuracy here because the veins on the screen use prop are indeed translucent. So I went to my local hobby shop, asked if they had any translucent red bits of tubing or wire, and the guy said, I have a good idea. He said, take this fuel line, it's cheap as chips by the meter, and he also then gave me a translucent red spray. Now I've used this stuff before, but in other colors. The cool thing was this was on sale for three bucks and all up with a meter and a bit of extras for me to play with. It was seven bucks. So I went ahead and sprayed the cutoff pieces, pre-measured cutout pieces, and they turned out great. Exactly how I wanted with that little bit of translucency. So the cool thing is there are guide holes in the fingers here, and obviously we have the guide holes here of where the original veins are supposed to go on the castings, which is great and just makes it so much more accurate. So what I'm gonna do is inject in the hole some E6000 into all the holes there and then stick these bad boys in. Now keep in mind I had to drill some holes under these bars here because the veins on the screen use prop actually do thread under. But overall, a great solution to replicate the screen use prop. So I've gone ahead and mounted all five blades onto some popsicle sticks just so we can prime and chrome these with ease and it'll just snap off later. There's only a couple of dabs of glue. Now I do apologize if the focus is in and out with this particular footage. It was really hard to try and focus this and really uh, lock in on it, but you get the idea. So it was two coats of primer and then I allowed about half a day for that primer to dry. Even though it's pretty quick, you still want it to properly set. Now when it came to the chrome finish, it was one coat of a dust coat, allow five minutes to dry, and then another dust coat, and then 48 hours to dry. You have to allow this particular chrome finish to dry for 48 hours. Otherwise, you are going to get fingerprints and whatnot all over your piece. And I want this looking as mirrored as possible absolutely stoked with the end result. We're gonna let these dry for 48 hours and then we can pop these bad boys on the glove itself. 48 hours later.
there we have it. A little bit of crimson, little bit of shoe polish, black and brown. We also got a little bit of off yellow, some purple, some amazing primer and chrome that I will be using in the future from now on for pieces like this. And we have an amazing screen lineage replica of the Bone Claw, Bio Hand, Bio Claw from Wes Craven's new Nightmare Ghouls and Ghoulettes. This is definitely one that I'm very proud to add to the collection. Again, it is a great bit of contrast from the regular gloves to something a lot more organic and very unique. A very big thank you to my dear friend Peyton Patron for hooking me up with one of these castings. Again, to have something that has screen lineage is just awesome. And I had an absolute blast painting this thing. The detail is incredible. The way we were able to work out how to do the veins and of course, chroming the blades. This chrome is not going anywhere. There's no fingerprints, no smudging, no smudging, no nothing. So ghouls and ghoulets, with that being said, drop a comment down below and let me know your favorite Freddy gloves. For me, the part one slash part two is my absolute favorite. Coming in second, it's Freddy's Dead. I know, massive stark contrast. I think that's why the Freddy's Dead glove is number two, because it's just so different from what we started with. Guys, wherever you are in the world, please have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. Hope you're well, hope you're happy. Be merry, be silly. And until next time, ghouls and ghoulettes, please always remember. Ah.